just have to, when you have a significant other, make that time. And so we did that today. So, you know what time it is. It's Friday. Hey, it's Friday. Ah, it's Friday. Yes, it's Friday. Ah, it's Friday. This channel is about good vibes, guys. It's about good vibes. So, if this is your first time with me, I like to tell you, I like to get all glammed up for my kings and queens, okay? And so, tonight, I just, I have on, it's such a really pretty outfit, but you can't see it. It's black, and the, it's, the top is long. It has a long train that's see-through train, really cute. With matching leggings, really nice. I have on a pair of heels. And so what I'll do for you guys, I'm going to have a, my Fly Fashions next week video. And I'll wear this so you can see it in its entirety because it's really cute. And the glasses of today, these are my glasses. They're very, how should I say, fancy. And I decided to wear these, out, these glasses because if you can see the whole outfit, it really goes well with these glasses. And so, for those of you that this is your first time visiting me, I like to wear shades because Angie throws shade, okay? So, when you see me doing all of this, you know I'm about to cut up. So, tonight's subject, I'm going to give you 11 ways to keep people out of your love life for good. And this is a good topic because a lot of people, their relationships are not going well or in because too many people in your business. And it's just really not a nice way to tell people, hey, mind your business. But sometimes those are the things that you have to say because you're supposed to protect, especially when you're married, you're supposed to protect your relationship. And so you don't need everybody in your ear telling you what to do and all of the things. And even if you're just dating somebody, you know, it's just people need to get out your business, especially when you're not asking for advice. So I'm going to tell you this. Go get your popcorn. Go get your snack of choice. Go get your drink of choice and come back. And watch your girl Angie and listen to this relationship topic. Get on the line and call, text, email, send a message in the bottle, baby, and let everybody know that Angie is on the line. Okay, so we're going to get right into this one. Number one, when friends and family attack. Relationships can be hard enough without the input of friends and family. It's all about boundaries. No matter how close you are to a friend and family member, the innermost details of your relationship should be off limits. And that's the truth. Sometimes we feel like, okay, we're close with family members, we're close with friends, but... You have to set boundaries because everybody that you talk in your business to is not for you. It's some people that don't want to see you happy with your wife. Don't want to see you happy with your husband. Don't want to see you happy in a committed relationship. They don't want none of that. And it could be because they don't have one. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> or it could be that Misery, baby, loves company. And some people, they be like, why are they all happy all the time? They make me sick. Every time I see them, they laughing and talking and going places and doing stuff. <laughs> Come on now. We all know the hate is real out here. Haters are real. And so you have to be careful who you're telling, telling your business to. And if you did not see my video I made a few months back called Setting Boundaries. You need to watch it because it's a really good video to watch. We need boundaries in all our relationship, be it friends, family, co-workers. Boundaries are necessary in all types of relationships, all forms of relationships. Number two, leave intimacy in the bedroom. As women, 
we love to, to, to run our mouths, especially about our men. But it's really important to keep your most intimate moments with your partner private. Do not tell friends and family something that could possibly embarrass your partner or pique friend, a friend's interest. And that goes for men, too. Men be running their mouth. They be at the barber shop. They be watching this game season, talking with their friends, talking about, oh, my God, I had dated a freak last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How she look? Oh, here's the pictures. Let me show you. They showing pictures they shouldn't even be showing. Women, they sit around. Girl, honey, my man. Ooh. You should have saw her. You should, oh, my God. He made me feel so good last night. Oh, my God. He got to feel good. And your friend looking at you like, oh, yeah. Oh, so what, what days you see him? Uh-huh. What did what, what he do to you? <laughs> and next thing you know, they snaking their way to whoever you talking about. So you got to be careful when you talk about into what's going on in your bedroom. Number three, don't act off emotion. You're in a heated disagreement and you are two seconds away from calling your brother or your dad. But it's just not smart. Unless you are in a clear, present danger, reacting out of emotion and bringing other people into your disagreements is not going to end well. When you make, when you make up, you will look forward for everyone else to go back to normal. And it just doesn't work out that way. You calling your, your, your mama, mama in the middle of the night. Mama, he, he hollered at me. Mama, he got all in my face. He did this. And he, your mama like, uh-uh, uh-uh, not my baby. And then Sunday, y'all come for Sunday dinner. And y'all later on that night made up and all of this and that. And mama laying in the bed worried and nervous. Is my child going to be okay? And she, and then you y'all come to Sunday dinner and she looking like, <laughs> and y'all happy. And she looking at your man and you like you crazy and still mad. She got her fist balled up. She just haven't forgotten what you said. But yet you have and expect everybody else to do that. It don't work like that. And people do that a lot, but it don't work like that. Number four, take it to God. I know some people might say, oh, that, you know, who said take it to God? But the truth of the matter is God won't judge you in a time where you may be uncertain in your relationship. Pray about it. You definitely don't have to worry about God telling anybody your business. Now, that's the truth. And not only that, I try to tell everybody when I give my relationship, even though my channel is, you know, I'm just having fun, but I do tell people, listen, <laughs> pray on it. I can't tell you what to do. I can guide you. I can give you my advice, but I can't tell you what to do. I can't make your decisions. You have to pray on it. I always say pray to God because that's the best thing you could do is pray to God. Number five, avoid public spats. Fighting in front of others is like an option. It's like a it's like an open invitation into your relationship or your marriage. If it's possible to avoid fighting in front of others, do so at all costs. And that is so true. It's just it's just not wise to be at a friend's house or your family having something they're gathering and you sitting there fighting and arguing with your husband because then the people gonna be looking at your husband like oh wow we thought he was we thought he was nice we thought he was cool oh this how he he talked to her behind closed doors now huh oh wow we see who this person is you don't you don't want to do that because that's just gonna make your spouse you and your spouse look really um you know people think highly of you and then when they see you do all of that they start thinking uh he not so nice or no she not so nice and that's not what you want in a relationship number seven choose your complaints wisely no one knows your partner better than you you know the ins and outs 
the good, the bad. If all you ever do is complain to someone who doesn't know them as well, you would negatively impact their view on your partner. Be very aware of whether you are portraying your partner in a negative light. That is definitely true. You could be out here single and you 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 met somebody you like. But you sitting up telling them, well, you know, girl, he kind of cheap and, you know, he going to ask me this and, and, and or say, you know, she all, she, she cool, but um, it's just something about her that's shady. And then they meet your friends and they looking at you all, they looking at that person real negatively. And it's because of what you said. It's because how you presented yourself about this person. If you like somebody, then you shouldn't tell your friends the little negative things about them because then they're not going to like your friend. And that's even in a marriage. If you constantly downing your wife to your family, then when they come over and they're around, around your wife, they're looking at your wife real negative. And that might not even be the whole truth on who your wife is. So you want to make sure you don't talk negative around people like that. Number eight, seek healthy advice when you need it. And the bottom line is, at some time and point, you might not think you need advice, but then sometimes you may need advice from another person or insight when it comes to relationships. And in the event that you do so, consider the source. I'm going to say it again. Consider the source. It's all about seeking wisdom because your relationship is valuable and should be protected. And so, if you're sitting up telling your business to, I never think that a single person should get a married person advice. I just don't. Because you're not married and you're not in the, you haven't been in this situation. You don't know this situation. I don't think that some married people should be giving out advice. Now, if you know that this man is 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 running around with other women, and this and his wife got a lot of issues and baggage, and you sitting up asking them for some advice, what what kind of advice you think you're gonna get? And you have to be, you have to know. When you are getting advice, if it's the right advice or not, if you if you talking to somebody and, and a guy and, and and the guy's telling his friend, listen, you need to go home, you need to check her, you need to let her know and put your foot down what you not gonna do with you this and that, because that's not how a, a man don't supposed to accept this, set that type of behavior from a woman. <laughs> do that sound like some good advice? No, that's not sounding like good advice. In your best interest, okay. You, you, this is good advice. Hey, man, I'm sorry to hear what you're going through, but y'all gonna make it through. You got a good woman, you need to go home, you need to talk to your talk to your woman, and you, you guys need to pray for pray, pray on him. Because let me tell you something the enemy's out here fighting, and he's fighting you guys because you guys are a beautiful couple, you just need to work some things out. That's some good advice. That's some advice that this person has your best interest for you. Because everybody don't have their best interest for you. Some people like to be in the middle of stuff. Some people are shit starters, okay? And they love to see chaos and, and cause chaos in other people's lives. So be careful who you sit up and tell your business to. Number nine, get on the same page. It's important to know what your partner is comfortable with sharing and what they may not be comfortable with sharing. Many times, men are more sensitive about what you share about them to your close, fr closest friends and family. Make sure you have a conversation and respect the agreement. And so, I say this. Everybody needs to vent. Everybody do. Um, I can't say it, it, it. people should not vent. But, be mindful what's coming out of your mouth. Real private information that's very private that you know your husband be mad if you told you shouldn't tell. Okay? And I don't know about sitting down. I, I never sat down with my husband to say what I should say or what I shouldn't say. I really don't say anything. But 
uh, when I, at times when I do vent, I really never sat down and said, what should we talk about? I just had a common sense to know this is not something to say. But for some people, it might be good to sit down and talk with your spouse about what you feel is comfortable for you to talk about. Number 10, nip some things in the bud. Sometimes friends and family can pry. They ask questions and it's up to you to set the boundaries by being bold enough to say that's private and something we don't discuss. And I talked about boundaries and that's absolutely true. I just believe that if you have shared information with somebody about what's going on in your relationship. They shouldn't be coming up to you talking about, hey, hey girl, did, did, did he spend his paycheck last week? When he did he gamble last week? That's not that's not your business. That's not your business. You don't have a right to come up to somebody and ask that. But some people are ignorant enough to do that. And so if they do that, you politely say, I just personally say, listen, that's not your business. But you can be polite and say, listen, uh, I don't feel that that's, I don't feel comfortable discussing that with you. I don't care what you said to her last night. You don't feel comfortable talking about that with, with that person. Because they shouldn't come out and ask you no type of questions. Boundaries need to be set. Number 11, do not vent on social media. There's so many people that sit up and tell all their business about their relationship on social media. I see it all the time. He left me. He did this. He left me and my baby. Ah. Girl, bad. That's not for the world to know. That is not for the world to know. So be careful what you put on social media. Period. Put a period on that. Number 12, I'm going to say this. If you have people in your life that are constantly butting in your business, giving you advice when you didn't ask for advice, always trying to tell you what to do, always in your business, and I'm going to tell you something, and not respecting your relationship, that person is toxic and you need to get them out of your relationship because... A lot of couples out here end up in divorce, end up losing a partner because of bad people buttoning their business, worried about what they're doing all the time, and just being inappropriate. And those people are toxic and should not be in your life. I don't care who it is. They should not be in your life. Number 12. I'm going to throw a bonus. This is the bonus. Trust your own instincts when it comes to love and your business. I say it all the time. We have, God gave us a gut feeling, everybody. And so sometimes you have to use your gut feelings to know how to proceed in your relationship. Because like I said, you know the ins, the outs, the good, the bad. You know your man, you know your woman better than anybody. And so sometimes you just have to use your gut feelings. And you have to trust in that. And on that note, I'm just going to end it to say, relationships are hard enough. It's not easy being married all the time. It's not easy. Every day is not easy. It's not easy being in committed relationships. It's not easy just being in a relationship. And so the last thing you need, especially people that are married, the last thing you need is for people to be buttoning your business, worried about what your man doing, worried about how you acting, worried about <laughs> your relationship. And it's not their, it's not their place. And so you have to, like I said, you just have to tell people to mind their business. Mind your business. But on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to say stay in peace and not in pieces. And thank you for watching my channel.